Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Alien Familiar RPG Podcast. I am Clayton, and this is the end of my three-part series of solo episodes talking about the different stages of a campaign. The previous episodes were the, about the beginning and the middle of the campaign, episodes 85 and 79, respectively. Before we get started, you can find show notes and more at alienfamiliar.com. You can email us at alienfamiliarmedia at gmail.com. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash alienfamiliar. And if you would like to help us out with hosting costs, you can do so at patreon.com slash alienfamiliarmedia. Any help that you would be able to give us would be very greatly appreciated. So, like I said, solo episode, and we're talking about the end of the campaign. Um, I've already, we've already kind of talked about the end of the campaign um, a little bit in episode 52, in which we talked about specifically the final battle of the campaign, taking on the big bad evil guy or whoever your main villain is for your campaign. This episode, I'm going to be focusing more on the overarching end of the campaign, the um, all of the things that lead up to the very end, and um, some of the do's and don'ts that I've learned, having done only a few actually end of the games. Most of my games peter out sometime in the middle, so... Of all the topics, this is probably the one that I've had the least amount of actual first-hand experience. I could probably count on one hand the number of campaigns that I have run to the satisfactory conclusion that was planned from, from the beginning of the campaign. Whether that the exact ending was planned from the beginning or whether it was something that evolved over time, that just depends on the style of the game that I was running at the time. So, where does the end start? Um, I would say that the end starts whenever the player characters have enough pieces of the puzzle of the story or whatever you're doing that they begin start they get, they begin to make real plans to thwart the main enemy of the campaign and potentially to start to wonder about um, how the player characters are actually going to do that, how they're going to defeat the enemy. Um, the player characters are reaching not only the height of their power, but also the height of their autonomy, their ability to set their own course for the campaign. Um, the end is when the, the player characters can clearly point to something and say, we need to stop or change this thing, and we are going to go about doing it in this particular way. Maybe it's something that they have to figure out how they're going to do, how they're going to do that. That is definitely part of, of the beginning of the end. Um, in TV series, um, especially those that are told in a serial format, the end generally begins in the final season or the second to the last season, uh, particularly in Game of Thrones. I would consider the end starting whenever the final alliances are created. That that will be the groups who will face off against each other in the final big battle of the series. So what are some things that you should do at the end? Well, do whatever is going to be cool and whatever is going to be the culmination of everything that has come before it. Um, but most importantly, there are definitely things that you should stop doing. Stop putting out new plots. Don't put out new plots. Wrap up plots. From here on out, everything in the campaign should be reductive in some way. And by this I mean avoid presenting new things that are plot relevant. If something is new, for instance, uh, like the, the PCs made meeting a major NPC, then this NPC might be new in that they've never met them before, but the presence of this NPC in the world should have been foreshadowed in some way. The player characters might have heard stories or news about this NPC. Um, it might be a surprise that this PC, this NPC shows up 
or there might be a surprise as to who exactly this NPC is, um, or that they are going to have an important hand in the end, but the player characters should not be caught off guard. This shouldn't be something that comes out of left field. Um, the last thing you want to do when the player characters are putting the final pieces together is just dump a whole bunch of new pieces onto the table. More than anything, it sh this would show a poor grasp of what makes a good narrative, and that's why I play this game, is to tell a good story. Um, I wish that this was a hard and fast rule that could always be applied and just say, never bring in any new characters, but there are absolutely some instances where it must be done, and this instance would be a major player character gets themselves killed by one mechanism or another, whether it be a series of poor rolls or just, just some profoundly boneheaded thing that the, that the player character does that irrevocably leads to their death, you're gonna have to bring in somebody new into the party. And the end of the campaign really is the absolute worst time to bring in a new player character. Doubly so if this is a new player into the group. I highly caution against bringing a new player into a group at the end of a campaign because this new person in the group is not going to know what in the hell is going on and they're not going to have any buy-in. They're not going to have any stake. They're not going to care about the campaign and the story that's been going on. And this would be the worst time in which to ingratiate a new player into the group. If you have to bring a new player in, have them hold off and not join the group until after the campaign ends. You might have to truncate the end, but do not bring a new player into the game at the very end. If you're thinking about just bringing in a new player character, if a PC got killed off and the player who is has been around for the entire campaign and they want to make a new player character, I think that might work, but I have a better idea that I have seen work in the past, and this is my go-to, and that is if you can find a way for it to be contrived that someone who was previously an NPC can become a player character and that player can take over this, this NPC, that is the best way to do it. Um, it might take the GM and the player to work together if there is an NPC who will integrate well into the party, but I feel that especially the closer you get to the end of the game, the end of the campaign, then the closer the the players need to be as a cohesive group and bringing in an NPC who the player characters already know, hopefully they already love, and just elevating this NPC to a player character, it provides all of the buy-in that the players need for having a new person in the group. Um, ideally, this is someone who the, the player characters who the player characters trust and the player who is taking over that character has enthusiasm for playing them. And, and if you can find somebody who meets these criteria, by all means, bring them in. Um, I see that this is a really big bonus, not only because this NPC has been viewed as being above the PCs in some way, and if they like them, then you have the benefit of the player characters who have always looked up to this NPC, now they see, oh, now we're on par with the people who we used to look up to. The player characters are realizing, oh, now we're the big dogs. We are the ones who are dictating what's going on in the world and how things are going to take off from here and how things are going to get to resolve. And if you feel like your player characters aren't to that point, they don't realize that they are the big dogs, that they're the big damn heroes in this story, you might want to reevaluate whether the player characters really are 
the heroes in this story that is being told. And that might be a clue that you're not quite at the end, or or maybe your campaign isn't the story about the player characters that all of the players are definitely expecting and most likely definitely wanting. The next advice I have is that you should definitely plan for the end, plan how it's going to arrive. Um, there's an there's an axiom that I I fully embrace, and that is those who fail to plan plan to fail. Um, if you've been throwing out plot threads without a way of tying them together, then you're bound to run into problems getting to the end, and and getting to an end that doesn't have any plot holes or pieces that are supposed to be important, but just end up being dropped because there's really nowhere to fit it in. Uh, if you don't plan out how the end is going to arrive, the important pieces that are there, you're just going to end up with a mess, narratively speaking. But not every single thread needs to be tied up at the end, especially if there's a chance of doing a sequel campaign. Um, sometimes it's okay to leave some threads undone, um, especially very personal things that are relatively minor to the player characters. Um, these might be things that the player, player characters want to tackle in the epilogue of the campaign. Um, I'll get more on the epilogue here in a little bit. Um, but as you're getting close to the end and you, you start tying these thread, these threads up, um, you should be very honest with your players that the end of the game is in sight. Um, the players should probably know who they are up against and they should probably have a way of figuring out how or, or in what manner they're going to be defeating the enemy or the big bad. Um, taking on a big bad is usually the way that most of these games are going to end. So make sure that your players are aware that they are reaching this point. Video games like The Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Final Fantasy, Resident Evil, Legend of Zelda, God of War, None of these massively successful game franchises hide the fact that the players is getting to the end of the game. Hell, most of them give you a frickin' prompt telling you, the player, that you are about to go to a point of no return, and this is the time to go wrap up everything that you need to before you go to the end. I think that in a tabletop role-playing game, the player should also know when they're reaching the end. You usually don't have to do things quite as obvious as giving them a sign that the end of the campaign is approaching, but sometimes you do. Um, especially if you're running like a highly episodic game or a game that is more about exploration or a sandbox style game, then it might not really be readily readily apparent when you are entering the end of the campaign. So go ahead and let the players know. Um, give them some time to get things wrapped up if you're going to let them know that, hey, we're getting to the end. Um, earlier, I said that um, in the end, you shouldn't be bringing in any new NPCs. Um, I would say that what you should do instead is bring back old NPCs. Um, in, important NPCs from the past should definitely make some sort of an appearance. Allies and contacts that the player characters have made along the way of the campaign should, should come back in some form. Um, um, if you don't plan on doing this, I've experienced where the players themselves will instigate doing this. Um, a lot of times they'll seek out help in whatever form the final contact conflict takes. Um, they'll try to think back on people and things that they have encountered along the way that are going to help them in the, in the final conflict of the campaign. And by God, if you haven't remembered the name of the captain of the guard in 
whatever major city the player character started in, at the end of the game, they will remember who that person was, and they will suggest, hey, we know this guy, he has access to an army, he might be able to help. So whenever the player characters go about doing all of this, I try to shy away from using game mechanics as often as I can. Um, I try to let the story of the player characters interacting with these NPCs just play out in the way that that makes the most sense from how the player characters' choices and their past actions have helped to shape the world that they now live in. Um, there are the reason why I don't like to use a lot of the really strict rules is that there are just certain tropes that work in books and movies and video games that do not work in RPGs if you try to follow the rules of the arbitrary dice. Um, the dice just don't care when it comes to telling a good story. The dice can be your enemy. Um, dice don't understand what is dramatically appropriate or even what makes sense sometimes. So instead of relying on, on dice to decide things, um, I try to let past deeds of the player characters speak for themselves. If the player characters have always been faithful allies, then let that be rewarded. If the player characters have been just little shits, getting away with things simply because they have access to all of the things that make player characters special, then this is the time to really have that come back and bite them in the ass. Um, as far as the final battle itself, um, I I don't feel like the, the final battle itself should be the very end of the campaign. Um, yes, it is the end of the main conflict, but I feel like it's the end of the game works best in some form of an epilogue. Um, by this point, after you've had the, the final conflict of the game, um, the, as GM, your story is pretty much as complete as it's going to get. Um, and so it's time to just let go of any lingering control of the reins that you might have. Um, allow the player characters to work together to come up with some sort of an epilogue for their players or for their characters. Um, this doesn't have to involve dice. See what I just said a few seconds ago about how dice get in the way. Um, I like to allow the player, the players the freedom to dictate how their characters have been shaped by the events of the campaign and especially the end of the campaign and use this to describe how their characters are going to like retire or how they're going to spend the next years of their life. Um, let them describe how they and their have how, how the character and that character's legacy continues. Um, this is especially true if one or more of the characters died in the final battle. Um, if your campaign allows for some form of resurrection, uh, maybe this is a time when resurrection just shouldn't work. Um, when I ran my Abana campaign, um, of which we talked about uh, in the wrap-up uh, episode um, 25, um, after the final battle, we took about an hour or so going around the group, and we were figuring out what happened next in the world. Um, we talked about how alliances between different factions had either grown stronger stronger, or fractured into rivalries over the course of the campaign. Um, the players talked about where they saw their character's place in the world and the role that they saw, that they saw um, how these now major heroes in the world, how their influence was going to be felt throughout the world. Um, some characters retired. Um, some took their rightful places as leaders of their peoples. Um, Others tried to just slip into obscurity and establish some sort of normal life for themselves. Um, whenever the end happens, it should also kind of be like the promise of a new beginning. Um, the end should never just 
be the end. When you get to the end of your story, there should be something letting the players know that things are going, there are going to be things that come next. Um, I feel like this, I, I really like this because it, it emulates real life the, in that um, if the story comes to a satisfactory conclusion and and you want to emulate real life in your game, then by all means, leave some imp- unimportant or keep, leave some things that are important still undecided at the end of the game. Um, despite the divisiveness of the end of the TV series Game of Thrones was, I feel like the final episode did a really good job of one thing, and that was letting you know that there are still things in motion. There are still things in play. The story of the main character, the the couple of main characters who we were really following the fi- the final episodes of the series, um, their s- particular stories were wrapping up, and their their place in the grand game of Thrones was coming to an end. Um, the end of the series still left the world a very rich place in which events were still unfolding. Um, the decisions of the main characters were still setting the course of the future for good and or ill. Um, we watched as the seeds of the of future conflicts were sown and the ramifications of the actions during the final episodes were starting to have far-reaching influence in the world, even beyond Westeros. And um, even though the story had been told, we knew that there were other stories out there just beginning. So, looks like this is going to be a pretty short episode. Um, I've just got a, um, just one geek thing this uh, this episode. It's a, um, a documentary that is on Amazon. It is called White Savior, Racism in the American Church. Um, If you are at all interested in the way that the church has been used to to perpetuate and to prop up racist ideologies, I recommend you give this this documentary a good watch. So um, I think that's enough of this bullshit. Uh, I need to get started prepping for my next game. Thank you very much for listening. This has been a production of Alien Familiar Media. You can find past episodes and more at alienfamiliar.com. You can email us at alienfamiliarmedia at gmail.com. This production is protected under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution no derivatives license. Music for this episode is Suburban Outlaw by Forget the Whale and can be found at freemusicarchive.org.